today's Bhagavatam class. Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Narayanam Namaskrutam Naram Chaiva Narotamam. Devim Saraswatim Vyasam Tatajayam Udiret. Nashta Praeshu Abhadreshu Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya Bhagavati Uttama Shloke Bhakti Bhavati Nashtiki Hare Krishna Dandat Pranam Srimad Bhagavatam 11th Canto Chapter 21 Explanation of the Vedic Path uh, Containing Shloka Number 19 to 26 Visheshu Guna Adhyasat Unsa Sangha Tata Bhavet Sangha Tatra Bhavet Kamaha Kamat Eva Kalihin Runam Kale हे दुर्विषह क्रोध तमहतम अनुवर्तते तमसाग्रस्यते पुंसन चे पुंसह चेतना व्यापिनी द्रुतम तया विरहित साधो जंतु शून्याय कल्पते तत तस्य स्वार्थ विभ्रंश मूर्छितस्य मृतस्य च विषय अभिनिवेशेन न आत्मानं वेदन अपरम वृक्ष जीविकया जीवन व्यर्थम उत्पत्त्याशुनेशुनेशुसमर्थ Atmana anartha hetushu avidusha swa artham brahmita vrujin advani katham yunjat puna teshu tantama vishata buddha eva mevasitam keda chita vigyaya kubuddhaya palashrutim kusumitam na veda gyavandati translation and purport by the Srila Prabhupada Jagat Guru Srila Prabhupada ki jay one who accepts material sense object as desirable certainly becomes attached to them. From such attachment, lust arises and this lust creates quarrel among men. From quarrel arises intolerable anger followed by the darkness of ignorance. This ignorance quickly overtakes a man's broad intelligence. O oh, saintly Uddhava, a person brave of real intelligence is considered to have lost everything. Deviated from the actual purpose of his life, he becomes dull, just like a dead person. Because of absorption of absorption in sense gratification, one cannot recognize himself or others, living uselessly in ignorance like a tree. One is merely breathing just like a bell. So, uh, those statements of scripture <laughs> promising pretty rewards do not prescribe the ultimate good for men, but are merely enticements for executing beneficial religious duties, like promises of candy spoken to induce a child to take beneficial medicine. Simply by material birth, human beings become attached within their minds to personal sense gratification long duration of life sense activities, bodily strength, sexual potency, and friends and family. Their minds are thus absorbed in that which defeats their actual self-interest. Those ignorant of their real self-interest are wandering on the path of material existence, gradually heading toward darkness. Why would the Vedas per encourage them in sense gratification if they, although foolish, submissively pay heed to Vedic injunction. Persons with perverted intelligence do not understand this actual purpose of Vedic knowledge and instead propagate as the highest Vedic truth the flowery statements of the Vedas that promise material rewards. Those in actual knowledge of the Vedas never speak in that way. The actual goal of human life should not be material sense gratification, for it is the basis of conflict in human society. 
although the vedic literature sometimes sections sense gratification the ultimate purpose of the vedas is renunciation since vedic culture cannot possibly recommend recommend anything that disturb human life or lusty person is easily angered and becomes inimical to anyone frustrating his lusty desire since his sex desire can never be satisfied holistic person ultimately becomes frustrated with his own sex partner and thus love hate relationship develops holistic person considers himself to be the enjoyer of god's creation and is therefore full of pride and false prestige the lusty proud person will not be attracted to the process of humble submission at the lotus feet of the bona fide spiritual master attraction to illicit sex is thus the direct enemy of krishna consciousness which depends upon humble submission to the representative of the supreme lord lord krishna also state in bhagavad gita that desire for illicit sex is the all during sinful enemy of this world because modern society sanction unrestricted mixing of men and women its citizens cannot possibly achieve peace rather the regulation of conflict becomes the basis of social survival this is the symptom of an ignorant society falsely accepting the material body as a is good uh, as described here by the words vas uh, vishayeshu gunadhyasti uh, gunadhyasat who no is to affectionate to his own body will inevitably be seized by sex desire the desire of material uh, association arises from one's propensity to deny that everything is god's energy falsely imagining a material sense object to be separate from the supreme lord one desires to enjoy them such desire gives rise to conflict and quarrel in human society this conflict and uh, in- inevitably gives rise to great anger which makes human being become foolish and destructive thus the actual goal of human life is quickly forgotten krishna consciousness is so vital and essential that one who has deviated from this progressive path of self realization is considered to be virtually con- unconscious or like a dead person since every living entity is part and parcel of krishna anyone who falsely identifies with the external body is actually unconscious of his real position thus it is stated shunyaya uh, kalpate uh, perceiving that which has no factual existence he is devoid of any tangible progress or benefit in life one whose consciousness is absorbed in the non existent become himself practically non existent in this way the eternal living entities become fallen lost in the ocean of material existence and it is only by the special mercy of the pure duties of the lord that they can be rescued the lord's duty is therefore instruct the fallen people to chant hare krishna hare krishna 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 hare 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 ram hare ram 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 hare hare by this process our real consciousness and life can be quickly revived just as trees uh, having no means of defending themselves are always being cut down similarly the conditioned souls are constantly being cut down by the cruel laws of nature which impose innumerable miseries culminating in sudden death although foolish people think they are helping themselves and others they actually do not know their own identity nor the identities of their so called friends and relatives absorbed in gratifying the senses of the external body they spend their lives uselessly without spiritual profit this useless lifestyle can be transformed into perfect life simply by chanting the holy names of god in krishna consciousness as recommended by shri chaitanya mahaprabhu in the previous verse lord krishna stated that person absorbed in Uh, sense gratification certainly deviate from the real purpose of human life but since the 
Vedas themselves promise heavenly sense gratification as the result of sacrifice and austerity. How can such promotion to heaven be considered a deviation from the goal of life? The Lord here explains that the fruity rewards offered in religious scriptures are merely inducement like candy that is used to induce a child to take medicine. It is actually the medicine that is beneficial um, and not the candy. Similarly, in fruit you, uh, sacrifice, it is the worship of Lord Vishnu that is beneficial, not the fruit to reward itself. According to Bhagavad Gita, those professing uh, fruit rewards to be the ultimate goal of religious scripture are certainly less intelligent, fools inimical uh, to the purpose of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. The Lord desires that all conditioned souls be purified and come back home back to Godhead for an eternal life of bliss and knowledge. One who opposes, opposes the Lord's purpose in the name of religiosity is certainly bewildered about the purpose of life. Our attachment to the material body and the bodies uh, of family, family, uh, family and friends inevitably leads to un unbearable anxiety and suffering. The mind absorbed in the bodily concept of life cannot possibly advance in self-religion and thus one's hope for an eternal life of bliss and knowledge is repeated by the objects of one's so-called affection. Activities performed in ignorance are beneficial neither for uh, one step nor other, just as charitable activities one may perform in a dream bestow no tangible benefit on real people. The conditioned soul is dreaming of a world separate from God, but any advancement experienced in this dream world is merely hallucination. The Lord uh, said in Bhagavad Gita, Sarva Loka Maheshwara, He is the supreme enjoyer and Lord of all planets and worlds. Only by Krishna consciousness, recognition of the supremacy of God can one make actual progress in life. A materialistic person are not prepared to renounce society, uh, friendship and love, which are all based on uh, on sex indulgence to instead uh, take to a life of renunciation and self-realization in order to bring such foolish person under the canopy of Vedic injection. The Vedas promise innumerable material rewards, even promotion to heavenly planets to those who faithfully execute the Vedic injection. As explained by the Lord, such rewards are likely the candy offered to a child who then faithfully takes his medicine. Materially, enjoyment is certainly the cause of suffering since all enjoyable objects are subject to destructions along with the called so enjoyer. Material life is simply painful and full of anxiety, uh, frustration and lamentation. We become agitated by seeing a so-called enjoyable object such an, uh, as the naked body of a woman, a beautiful residence, a sumptuous prey of food and the expansions of our own prestige. Uh, uh, but actually such imagined happiness is simply the intense expectation of a satisfaction that never comes. Uh, one uh, uh, remains perpetually frustrated in material existence and the more one tries to enjoy, the more one's frustration increases. Therefore, the Vedic knowledge which aims at ultimate peace and happiness on the spiritual platform cannot possibly authorize the materialistic way of life. Material rewards are employed by the Vedas merely as inducements uh, for the conditioned soul to take the medicine submission to the Supreme Lord Vishnu through various types of sacrifice. Those who are Vedavadarat uh, claim that religious scriptures are meant to facilitate sense gratification in the ignorance of conditioned life, the true goal of a religion. However, a spiritual liberation in which material sense gratification ceases to exist. The directness of bodily attachment 
cannot exist in the effulgent light of a spiritual knowledge. In the ocean of spiritual bliss, the anxiety-ridden, apparent pleasure of this world vanishes completely. The true meaning of Veda, our perfect knowledge, is to surrender to the Supreme Lord in full Krishna consciousness for an eternal life of bliss and knowledge as the Lord's faithful servant. The followers of karma, mimamsa, philosophy declare that there is no eternal kingdom of God beyond this universe and that one should uh, therefore become a professional performer of Vedic ritual in order to keep oneself in a material heavenly planet as explained by the Lord to Sri Uddhava in a previous chapter. There is no actual happiness in the material world since one will inevitably rotate throughout the various planetary environments stretching from heaven to hell and thus always be disturbed within the material atmosphere. Although the doctor may give a child candy-covered medicine, one who urges the child to eat the candy and throw away the medicine is certainly a great fool. In the same way, the flowery statements of the Vedas describing heavenly enjoyment do not award the real fruit of Vedic knowledge, but merely supply decorative blossoms of sense gratification. As stated in Vedas, Rugveda 1.22.20 Tad Vishnu Paramam Padam Sada Pashanti Surayo Even the demigods who are permanent resident of heaven are always looking to the eternal abode of the Supreme Lord. Foolish people who admire the slander of living in material heaven should therefore not that the demigods themselves are devotees of the Supreme Lord. One should not become a bogus propagator of so-called Vedic knowledge, but should take to Krishna consciousness and make a genuine solution to the problem of progressing in life. Thus end the purport. Om Jnanati Mirandasya Jnananjana Shalakaya Chakshurun Militam Enatasmai Sri Guru Venama Sri Chaitanya Mano Bishtam Sthapitam Enabhutale Swayam Rupa Kadamayam Dadati Swapadantika Vandeham Sri Guru Ho Sri Tapadakamalam Sri Guru Vaishnamancha Sri Rupam Sagrajatam Sagana Raghunathan Vitam Tam Sajivam Sahadvaitam Savadutam Parijana Saitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Sri Radha Krishna Padan Sagana Lalita Sri Vishakan Vitancha Namo Om Vishnu Padaya, Krishna Prishtaya Bhutale, Sri Mate Bhakti Vedanta, Swami Niti Namine, Namaste Saraswate Deve, Gauravani Pracharine, Nirvishesha Shunyavadi, Paschato Deshatarine, Mancha Kalpataru Becha, Krupa Sindhu Bevacha, Patitanam Pavane Bio, Vaishnave Bio, Namo Nama, Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya. Prabhu Nityananda, Sri Advaita Gadadar, Sri Vasadi Gaur Bhaktavrinda, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare Krishna Dandat Pranam. Uh, we continuing Canto uh, 11, Chapter 21, Explanation of the Vedic Path. Hey, shloka number uh, uh, 19 to 26. In this shloka, they describe about the uh, how the materialistic persons are not prepared to renounce sex, uh, sociality, friendship, and love. Here they told that material life is simply painful and full of anxiety, frustration, and lamentation. The true goal of religion is spiritual liberation, in which material sense gratification ceases to exist. And so we try to uh, perfect our knowledge is to surrender to the Supreme Lord in full Krishna consciousness and that is the eternal uh, bliss and knowledge 
of the Lord's faithful servant. And Pancha Kalpatarube cha Krupa Sindhube Eva cha Patitanam Pavane Bhyo Vaishnava Bhyo Namonam Hare Krishna Dandat Pranam Prabhuji will tell you in detail. Hare Krishna. Thank you very much, Mataji. So it's a very wonderful situation where Krishna is clarifying almost all the queries which can ever have and which make us completely attached to our material existence from every time. Like when we're talking about say quarrel, Krishna is talking about what happens due to quarrel. He says because of quarrel, there is going to be intolerable anger. And because of that, there is going to be only a jnana, the darkness of ignorance. And this ignorance will overtake our intelligence, buddhi. So indirectly what Krishna is trying to tell us is, Oh, dear children, please give up the propensity to quarrel. Kale durvisha krodha tamhattam anuvartate tamasagrasyate punsaha chetana vyapini idrutam. Further, Krishna is making us understand that if we are not having the intelligence, then we have lost everything. Because our actual purpose of life is something which we don't understand. And if we don't understand this thing, then we are just like a dead person. We are not supposed to be living if we don't understand that our purpose is to go back home, back to God. And we keep ourselves engaged in sense gratification. That is useless. Just like a tree. But then, Krishna also guides us that if you are starting to use the scriptural instructions wrongly, then again, you are increasing your impact. You have to understand that whatever the Vedas are saying, the scriptures are saying, it is like the medicines. We cannot take the sore medicine. So definitely it is going to be sugar coated. Or we will be told to take this, we will give you a chocolate. Or in nowadays, aap khana khalo, we will show you the mobile YouTube videos. So this is very profound. So whatever scriptures are saying, you have to understand the real meaning behind what it's being told there. Because, because of our birth itself, we become attached to the personal sense gratification, to think of long duration of life, to sense activities, to bodily strength, friends, family. Just look at that small child who is there in the as a fetus in the womb of the mother, along with all the dirty intestinal fluids, the small, small worms coming and eating on the skin, soft, soft skin. He's so tired, he's finally praying to Krishna, Krishna, please release me from here. I'll not come again in any uterus. And Krishna says, okay. And the moment he comes out and he's about to say, thank you, Krishna, he's made to cry. And if you are not crying, the nurse pulls you upside down and hits you. Oh boy, you are in Dukkhalayam. You cannot laugh. You have to cry. And then slowly everyone comes around. Oh, my chikku chikku. Your eyes are like this. Your nose is like this. And all the material attachments start being developed. To friends, to family, the discussions of long life, good health. And that is why in this 24 number shloka, Krishna is saying the same thing to Uddhava. Utpatti eva hi kameshu praneshu svajaneshu cha asakta manasa martya atmana anartha etushu. The end result, we become ignorant of our real self-interest and we keep on wandering on the path of material existence going towards andatamaha, darkness. And if we do not get our intelligence back, we never understand the actual purpose of Vedic knowledge. So Krishna is saying, please understand the truth. Please take up to Krishna Bhakti. Please come back home, back to Godhead. That is your real purpose to achieve Krishna Prem. Hare Krishna. Vancha Kalpata Rubesh Kripa Sindhu Bhaya Vacha 
Patitanang Pao ni Joyce na may Pio, namo namah.